Welcome back everybody. Kathy Arbor here. And today we're going to do a winter scene. Oh. So let me fix my lighting a little bit. Lighten that up. And I don't know about you, wherever you are in the world, but we have a ton of snow here in Ontario, Canada. A little bit early this year. Typically, in, we more or less don't really get a lot of snow till January. We get a dusting here and there, but not a pile. So we've got already about a foot of snow on my deck. And we're supposed to get snow squalls all for the rest of the week. Calling for 60 centimeters. <laughs> so it's crazy. So we're going to be doing the snow scene. And this is um, one of the uh, photos that I got from uh, Photoshop. I have a month membership there. And now she is facing you. I'll bring you in a little bit. Like all pictures and stuff, you don't have to stick to uh, the way it is. You can change things up. This is just a reference. But I did love the colors. And uh, a little bit different with the moon in there. I think I'll probably move the moon in a little bit. Uh, let me bring chat up here. And hey, Dar! I will be in lurk mode. Can't wait to see. Awesome. You're doing fantastic, Dar. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> uh, last week, or not last week, um, Tuesday, we did some cards that were rather cute, I must admit, and very simple. And there's traceables. And this is the card we did. And there's the watercolor. So you can make them any size you want and any color. It's extremely easy to do. Hey, Dot. So if you want to play along with that, uh, there will be more cards coming up. I just uh, haven't had a chance to get them done yet. So we're going to be doing it. Uh, this can be done on a canvas or it could be done on paper. I like to use uh, file folders, as you all know. And I think I'm just going to tape this up so I can see it. And I'll refer to that. And I'm just going to use this student grade gesso. And I like to gesso uh, paper in particular because it helps your paint uh, go on smoother. So you don't get that uh, drag, they call it, where the when you're painting, it kind of skips or it doesn't feel uh, s smooth. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. Uh, so when you do a little bit of a gesso coat, it doesn't have to be, you know, a bunch of uh, layers. Just one coat's good enough. And it it's, uh, just stops the paint from seeping into the paper so quickly. It's, it sits on top when you use a gesso. And uh, enables you to move the paint around uh, a little more easily. Now this is going to be a winter scene, mainly because of the weather we're having here. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be Christmas. It could be just for winter. If you want it to be Christmas, you could add bells to the trees. You could add maybe a Santa instead of a skier. Change it up 
to how you want. That's what I like about using a reference. It's just to give uh, either a better composition wise, maybe you like the colors of the picture, whatever it may be. So I'm just going to dry that. You got to make sure your gesso is good and dry before you start putting on your other colors. Now, if you don't have gesso, you can use just white paint or maybe you want to use a blue because there's a lot of blue in this painting. So a blue base coat would do fine also. Now, I'm not worried about if I can see stuff through it because I'm going to be adding quite a few layers to this. Uh, Kathy, do you have a video showing how you concertina fire folders with the tab scale cut? Um, hmm. I'm not sure if I do. I'll have to look it up. If not, I will do one next week for you. It doesn't take long. It's very easy to do. If I do, I will put it in the links below in the description for you. Good question, Dark. A lot of times when, you know, artists do um, videos, they forget not everybody knows everything you do. <laughs> I will be lurking while working on my December daily journal. Awesome, Brenda. And what? how do you do your daily, December daily? Is it more or less to document your day or is it just uh, junk journaling? Uh, maybe it's just journaling. How, everybody does it different. Just Kind of interested in how everybody's doing their December daily. All right. I guess I should. Okay, so looking at this, we have a lot of a lot of blue. We have purples and a little bit of blue down in, in here. And that's the funny thing, a lot of people think snow. It's white. Nope. Most of the time when doing snow, it's more on the purpley blue side. Hey, Kim. And the uh, highlights are white. So we have some really nice dark, almost uh, phthalo blue. Uh, we have... Hmm, you could go ultramarine in there too. And because the, I don't know if it's the sun or what. I don't know what this is here. I don't know if that, no, that can't be the sun. The shadows are this way. So I think the sun is over here somewhere. Because the, you see the shadows, how they're going across, and it's kind of low, so maybe it's either a sunrise or sunset, and they're skiing. Um, 
I'll get some paint out. So I want to use hmm. Prussian blue is a good one. Cobalt blue. And dioxazine purple. And we can use a uh, plain old gesso for our whites. And I want a really dark, almost black. Oh, I'll just use black, plain black. So five colors is what we need for this. So cobalt blue, Prussian blue, black, dioxazine purple, and a white. I'm using gesso. And the reason why I'm using gesso uh, I don't have a craft paint in white right now. And I don't want to use a artist grade because it's shiny. And these are matte when dry. Uh, kind of junk journal, art journal with handwritten memories. Awesome. Yeah, everybody does them differently. A doc, you might meant my day. If it's a boring day, I might journal a memory. I sketch sometimes. I tip in tea bags. I drink at Christmas. Things I find, pictures, receipts. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, and it's 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 a de-stressor too. Um, I know a lot of people like to journal just to get away from the the stressful time of Christmas. A lot of people find it very stressful. So it's a great um, way of de-stressing. <laughs> okay, so if I look at this uh, dark along the top going around the sides, and if I look in the shadowed areas of this snow, it's a very dark, dark uh, could go into the Prussian blue. So I could go Prussian blue in the very bottom areas here and it wouldn't hurt anything. Um, almost grayish color, the hill. But we don't have to do the whole thing. What we'll do is I've got an idea of how the colors are, and I like to use uh, just these old coffee filter or coffee uh, lids from Ground Coffee. And we'll put out some black. Actually, we don't need black yet. We're going to just use this blue, uh, the cobalt blue. I like using craft paint when I'm experimenting or testing things. Um, probably going to use a, quite a bit of that blue, actually. And some dioxazine purple. Is that one kind of chunky? It might be just a minute. Oh, this is Prussian blue. I'm just shaking it. That's kind of chunky, but we'll use it so it doesn't go to waste. All right, and then some purple. Just going to put the purple over here so I don't mix them up. And some white. And I'm going to use uh, the same brush I did with my gesso because this isn't uh, necessarily anything detailed 
it's just to fill the area. And I'm going to take uh, this pencil here. And from the picture, uh, it's about almost halfway, not quite, but almost halfway in the center. So about here. And it dips down, goes up a little bit like this into the trees. And then this dips down quite quickly like that. It could actually go like this. Okay. That's all I need right now. I'm going to have the moon right up there. So I'm just going to take the dioxine. Oh no, the, uh, Oh, am I going to be able to use this? It might be gone bef beyond uh, repair here. We'll see. Now it's a real dark. This is a beautiful night sky blue. I like to use this a lot. It's a very rich, beautiful color. So you can bring it down into here too. Just a nice dark. And into here. And don't worry if you, it's looking scratchy. We're going to add more to this. Now I can bring, I didn't clean my brush and I'm just getting some of this other blue. That's the cobalt, and it goes across down into the sides. You can mix it with the other, it'll just be dark when you mix it. Don't worry about it. And then we can add a little bit of white to our brush and start putting some white in there. Go into your other color at the top here, blend it in. Now you can take a big brush if you want to get rid of some of those brush marks. And it has to be dry. So this is a mop brush. And just lightly go over. It has to be wet though because it won't. Um, it's harder to do if it's dry or drying. Can't do it when it's dry. And it'll soften those brush marks a little bit so they're not so uh, in your face, so to speak. And then just brush it off. I'm going to put a little bit more white and glue right in here. So it would be lighter on the bottom half, especially along that hill. A little bit of water on my brush. If it's starting to feel like it's um, dragging your brush, just add a little bit of water to your brush. Not much, just a smidge. And then you can go into that purple again. I'm going to take some of this off. That purple with a little bit of that blue. Mix it in again. <clears throat> a little darker on the top.
just keep doing it until you like the uh, look. White. If I can blend this out a little bit. Not bad. I want it a little bit lighter in here. This takes a little bit of practice doing it with this brush. Okay, good enough. I'm not worried about this area here because we're going to have the snow. Okay. I'm going to turn the light off above so you don't have the glare. There. Okay. Now, we want to do the snow, and the snow is going to be a fairly dark. Did I put black in there? Prussian blue. No, I didn't. Okay, let's add a little black to our mix now. This is fairly dark. The Prussian blue and the black together down here. And it goes up to about there, and then it lightens more into the bluish. Tones. Bring in here. up like that and into here not too worried about how um, it's looking I just want a darker area so that I can build the snow on top so that goes up a little bit like that Okay, so let's dry that. And just remember, a lot of times when you're doing the first steps to these paintings, you'll go through a, a rough stage where it's not looking the greatest. <laughs> but be brave and continue on. You'll see it does get better. OK. 
I want this to be fairly dry. All right, so now, <clears throat> what should we do first? Let me think. I think we could do the trees first, and then we'll do the snow. So the trees are, they're covered in snow. So, we want to do the darkest area first. Uh, let's bring that a little bit lighter. There you go. So the darkest areas have to be put in. So whatever it doesn't have snow on it. And you form your tree with that darker color. And you can use a bristle brush. There's many ways of doing this. Uh, some people like using um, a fan brush. Some people like using a filbert. Uh, so there's a fan brush. If you have a real fuzzy um, brush like this, this is good to use. Um, you want something that's going to give a bunch of different um, marks. You could, in the center, use a sponge if you wanted to also. Let's see what I've got here. Um, just seeing what I have in my arsenal here that I can use. Oh, there it is. That's a fan. Okay, where did I put that? Well, let's try and use this. This is called a foliage brush by Dynasty. And it's got a really uneven bristle end. It's kind of splayed out, which gives it a lot of texture. So we want it dark again. So we want that dark color of the black with the dioxazine purple. Because it's more or less a silhouette look. And Let's see, it's about, starts off, the biggest one is about here. And comes down like into here. I'm not worried about making mistakes in this part because it's going to be covered. I just want to um, show basically where the trees are. There's a small one going down here and then there's another one about there and there's actually another one in there these are pine trees that I'm thinking about and there's one down here so uh, pine trees if you want to um, just with the end of your brush usually they they're pointed kind of up a little bit. And as they they grow, um, the lower branches get kind of heavy because of all the length and growth on them. So you can do that. And the inside is usually a little more dense. So you won't really see that um, 
main trunk. As you get down into here, they get a little bit wider. Now we're going to be covering most of this up with snow. So don't get too caught up in all the shape and detail with this part. You know, they'll overlap each other, so you won't be able to see some of them because they are in front of each other. So just those areas would be a little bit um, fuller. And this one kind of has a few on there, more or less all on one side because probably the wind is top of a hill, so probably it's very wind blown there and the growth is sticking to one side. Still make them all perfect little Christmas trees. It actually looks better if you don't. Something like that. Very simple. Hey, Lena. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Lena. You had to lace up your boots. <laughs> mm. Oh, you got cold weather? We got snow galore here, Lena. I'll send you some. I got lots to spare. <laughs> we have snow squalls for the next four days. You're calling 30 to 60 centimeters now of snow. And whiteout conditions. So no, no going anywhere. Um, okay, so while that's drying, let's look at, or uh, actually, let's draw that other tree. So there's a uh, more of a, a, some type of hardwood tree, and we're going to do the same thing, same um, paint combo. They predict snow here this weekend, too. Oh, okay. Did you get a lot of snow there? So we got the main branch. And then it um, splits. As it gets up, it gets smaller. Depending on your brush you're using, this isn't the best brush. And it just keeps dividing as it goes up. And you can do exactly to how the um, picture shows, if you want. They cross each other. Lots and lots of different branches in there.
that. We have a few smaller ones in there. Bunch of uh, saplings probably in there. A few sticks you can see. We can put these in again. Um, once the snow is in down here, put more limbs and whatnot. Okay, so that'll do for now. Alright, so now with our snow, I'm going to get another pallet out. Uh, we used to get snow, but past few years it's been more like frosty nights where it dries up during the day. Dry, cold wind. Yeah, and that last, I would say, hmm, 15 years here, we typically didn't get snow in November. We got maybe a dusting, but not like this. So this is like, whoa, <laughs> crazy. Um, so this is just dried up paint on here. So it's not going to change anything I mix. And I want, let me think. Let's use, I'm going to use this. Um, this is a Terry Harrison fan stippler small brush. I'm going to mix some white, the white here. And I want uh, more or less a purple, a mauve color. But I don't want it mauve mauve like this. So, so what I'm going to do, uh, if you have a yellow, you can add a little bit of yellow. Okay, so if you go to the opposite on the color wheel, so purple, the opposite is yellow. When you put the opposite color in a in a in a color, what it does is it desaturates your color. So it makes it more. Muted, I guess you could say. Now you have to be careful a little bit with these um, craft paints because I don't know what the um, mixes are. This should do. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of blue in there, I think. Just blew it up a bit because we have a lot of blue in my, um, yeah, that's better. So it's more on the bluey mauve side. Okay, so when we're doing the snow, we have your shadowed areas. So more or less in here is where our shadowed areas and We will stipple also. Don't worry if you go over your trees. We can always put those back in. But I'm just going to take my brush. And just swipe back and forth. I can even take it in here. I probably should have. Done that first, but. 
is what it is. Let's do a little bit more in here. I'm not too worried about the skier yet. This is kind of a dark color anyways. So we're going to put more layers on this. We have some fairly dark areas in here. Just going to pat in there. Dab. So if you've got the black showing through, don't worry about it good. Now we have to dry that before we can go on to the next part. So let's take our dryer. something that I can stipple with so um, I don't want a, a big pattern though so we could use let's see a big brush yeah let's use this this is a bigger brush oh I have paint on it Oops. oh well um, I am going to mix um, a little bit more purple or yeah, I guess I could put more purple and blue with it. Just a little darker. I'm just gonna dab the very end. And then right in here, I'm gonna start dabbing. Actually, it could be darker. Now this area is going to be the um, snow prints. darker I think. I'm just going to go right over that. I think I'm going to make a little bit more dark. So I'm mixing that blue and purple together. It's a little more concentrated in here. And there it's pretty well all dark. And this is an easy, beginner easy way of doing snow.
Just put a little bit in there. Okay. Some more paper towel. Now, we can go back into a little bit more of a lighter color again, or we could go, well, no, maybe we'll go darker first. I want to put that one color in, darker. It's just a few areas that have a really dark I don't need that big a brush, so. And I want a little bit of that. Um, what is it called again? Prussian blue. A bit of purple. Nice, nice dark. So there is um, like a s swipe of really dark, dark in here. Could almost be darker. Okay. And then there's these really dark areas in here. Just in the tree area. And I'm just swiping this stippler brush and then it just dabbing into the Prussian blue and then there's a little bit of a oh that must be her shadow right here and it narrows down right there like that this has a really dark area So now we can put in these little hills and this pathway here where she's walking. Down into here. You could go even darker down in here where it gets really dark. And there's lumps in the snow. Little marks here and there. These little wee little marks, I think, are from her poles, her cross country ski poles. So you can put some of those in. Mm. Let's get another a smaller brush. Just use this fan brush for a minute. So. Like that. A little lump of snow or whatever it is there and then the little 
little um, ski pool marks. You can put in as many or as few as you want. We um, This isn't just how we put them in. There is shading or highlighting to be done too. But some really dark darks right in the area in here. This could be darker. And then this. Like that. And looks funny right now, but once we get the, the brighter snow on it, it makes a big difference. Thanks, Lena. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit more of this color here. Just darken some of that, some of those areas, maybe a little bit of the Always little drifts of snow in this too. So you gotta remember to put those in. It's a little darker down in, in this area here. So let's darken that a little bit. Now you don't have to do the, the, the exact same thing on the photograph. It's just a reference. All right, so now we can add um, white to this. Now I don't want white, white yet, but I want it much lighter. So now we can um, start doing a little bit more um, along the edge here. I'll show you the picture. So see, it's kind of, there's bits and pieces, but some of that uh, darker is showing through it all. But we're not going to put every single little uh, mark in, so to speak. So we just want, I'm just going to use the edge of my fan brush and just go along, turn your brush every so often just so that you don't get a uh, stamp look to your areas. And just uh, dab and dot. It's fairly rough area in there. And then just on the outside here, you can do the same thing. But leave that inner area a little bit dark. Just concentrating on the this part first. And then it does come up to a little bit of a mound there. I 
like that. Okay. And don't worry if you're not liking it. Wait. Because uh, we'll, you can always add more dark on top of it if you feel you've put too much in. Now, with the little areas like this here, uh, it'll have a highlight at the top. And um, sometimes on the bottom. Not all the time, though. And then just a few dabs. Here and there. Just have to uh, take a look at the snow and, and see what you're seeing. Try to analyze what you're seeing. Now at the very top, I've changed this a little bit, but there's a, a light at the very top that you'll see. It's fairly bright. Now the light is coming from this direction, so there'd be a little bit more light on the these darker areas on that one side so it would be catching the light like that and then so in the lighter areas here we can add a little bit of snow there You can get, um, use your scruffy brush for this too. And come down here a little bit over the hill. Maybe some, depending on how many snowy lumps there are, you don't have to do the exact thing. And let's see, I think it'll come out like that. So wherever you're seeing a little bit lighter area in, in this mauve part, just add a few uh, speckles. Don't cover it all up, though. It's kind of like sparkles in the snow. You can always go back and Cover some of that up if you don't like it.
just a few here, not many, just a few, just to show that there's some sparkles in there from the sh snow shining. And just so lightly pouncing. Right, and now we can do the same thing on some of our trees. So we still have that color. And let's see. Now, they're showing the tree really laden with snow on the bottom parts. So we still want this um, mauvey color. because we'll add the brighter color on top. And it's in the shadow here, so it's not gonna be a bright white. It actually could be a little darker than that. When it gets down into the bottom area, it would be much darker. Probably even darker than that. So we got some really dark areas. And let's see. I'm just putting the, the major um, snow in here. And then we'll do the uh, The others. We'll probably have to put um, some of this back in again. That's fine. Okay, this one, this one's going to be really dark because it's kind of hidden down in the grove here. We still want to recognize it as a tree with snow on it, so to play with a little bit. We'll cover all the black up. And put in the tiny bedroom fireplace. What? <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of this color and do I still want to use this brush or not? Maybe, well, I guess we could. I'm 
I'm going to put in mostly this the darker um, snow color on the left side of this tree. Well, I'm leaving some areas, so you got to remember to leave some. And then the same on this one. Um, now this tree is supposed to be in front of this one, so I'm going to have to go over the tree, and then I'll paint the tree back in. Just easier. No point in fighting with paint, especially in a silhouette. Um, it's so easy just to paint it back in. And I'm going to add a little bit more in here. That and then this one here also we can still put even though there this one's the brightest we'll still put some of these in this dark snow color I think I'm gonna do those dark too. It's got a lot of snow on it in there. Okay, and just going to put a little bit in there. Okay. Now I'm going to take a smaller brush. Well, this is a number six. And now I can, um, well, let's put this tree back in here. Uh, it was black, I believe. Black and purple, maybe, or blue. So we'll just paint this back in. Uh, just went down a little bit didn't go all the way down. It's kind of hiding behind the tree in front. Like that. And I can put this tree had the limbs going like that in front of it. Um, I suppose I should wait till we put the other snow on. Yeah, let's wait. All right. Now we can uh, add a little bit of a lighter color to this shade. So just add your white. need to put a lot of white in there. Hmm, I guess we could use a couple shades in there too. So then um, 
I'm only, oh, I think I'm going to use that same brush. This, it will take forever if I use that one. So let's dry that off. And this is just basically on, there is some shining through the tree, but basically on the right side of the tree, it's going to have these lighter marks. And I'm not too worried about the shape, just more or less dots, because this is a uh, pretty much in the distance, so you're not going to really see too much. You can um, put in a little more detail if you want uh, later. There's a few shine throughs, but uh, we'll put those in with the white white. Right now I just want a few of these in just on the right side. There's a few in here, not many, just a few, because it's kind of sitting down low. Maybe a little bit there. Smooth it out a little bit. Okay, now let's get some real white. Uh, I think I'll just put it over here. So I want it white, white. I don't want any color. It's nice white, bright white. I'm just gonna pounce it off a little. I don't want it sopping. And I want it sprayed out. Get rid of some of that. I got a bunch of water in that brush, I think. Okay. Now the whites. There's a uh, some fairly bright whites in here, so like more or less on the well, let's see the bottom parts of some of these. Just a few. And then more on the right side again, but don't cover everything up. Be selective. too bright. Take that one off. Oops. Yeah, baby white. Okay. 
Okay, so just a few whites in here. Light. Um, just a couple there. And we can add some really bright brights in here. So wherever you have that, that white or light color, you can put white, white in there. Just dabs. For now, That one's too bright right there. I don't like that. So I'll take that out. Put a little more in here. Right in here. I'm just going to put a few on the tree there. Just a bit. More or less sparkles. <laughs> okay, now I want to take and do a little bit more of a where air, I want areas to be really bright and a precise type of mark. So, right on the top of the hill would be. Uh, quite bright. Uh, I think I'm going to get a different brush. I want something very nice chisel here. Okay. So it would Right on the top here. Be bright. And here. There'd be some marks, a little more uh, marks in the, um, more or less on the right side of these uh, lighter areas. And put some of those in. You can make some a little bigger if you want. Just where the snow is. Um, been disturbed, so there would be different peaks.
just dabs and dots and And let's see, a little bit in here, maybe some some limbs be showing. few of these uh, little lines. Just your brightest. Um, where you think the uh, sun would be shining on this. Uh, let's see. We have a few little sticks and stuff in there that's shining. gives it a little bit more character, a little more interest. Um, a few little divots. And then I'm going to take some of that purple again in the blue. And 
I'm just going to go in here because there are some um, areas that aren't quite as, uh, let's see, aren't quite as uh, dark. There's some snow in there. Or shadow along there. And that same color just along the just a Give this a little bit of an edge. Oop, must have dropped a spot there. Just a, that. I think I need a little, little bit more shading areas here and there too in this because this would be the um, steps that she's making and disturbing the snow. Sometimes there's a few more shadows. I don't think you can get it unless you want to spend hours um, completely, but give an indication so it looks, that's what it looks like. <laughs> this isn't perfect by any means, but I think it'll do. All right, so let's put her in. Now, I'm not going to have her facing, I don't think. It's kind of hard to put her face in. It's so small. But we can put her basically turned the other way. So I'm just going to use uh, this purple and a little bit of black and blue. So it's a real dark color. And she's basically on the very top of the hill. And it's kind of like making carrot people. So you have the leg. And this one is kind of hiding behind that little bit of snow there. And a little bit wider at the top. The woman, and then <laughs> thanks, Kim. And then uh, her sweater is kind of a purpley gray color again. So I'm sticking with all the same colors that we have. I'm not adding any other colors. So a little bit of gray in there and some white. So she has a vest on too, but um, I think I'm just going to paint this right now and then her arms. I'm not going to put a backpack on her. And she has a hat. Maybe we'll put a different colored hat. Maybe, a, I don't know, purple hat, blue hat, or black. We could do black too. 
which is black vest on though. So let's put the vest on. Oh, we've got to wait for that to dry. Let's dry that first. All right. Thanks, Kimberly, for taking care of that. You got great boots. <laughs> um, so we're going to put a vest on this person. It could be a him. It could be a her. Whatever you want to make it. So... And well, let's give her a purple hat. Kind of. So just a ball. Like that. She's got a big sweater on, so and then we want to take a smaller brush. Let's see. Here's all my there's one. I got a script liner here. And I just want a little bit of, of um, lighter color to make some wrinkles in her her, her uh, pants here. So let's see. The sun's coming this way. So she would have probably a highlight on her arm here. And along her hat, and um, your vest, like that, I guess. Pants. Maybe a little bit. Let's see. On. Sunny day. 
doesn't have to be anything you know dramatic it's just simple and then she's got her poles so you're not going to see her hands because she's facing the other way so right mm, they're kind of big but that's okay like that Alrighty, now I can take that white with my liner brush and I can do a little bit more detailing with the tree, that bigger tree, this one here. It does have some uh, lighter areas, so now there won't be a lot of no, that's too much water on my brush. I might actually take a Posca and do that. Just so that it's a little easier for those of you that um, don't have Poscas. You could use a uh, gel pen or uh, let's see. This is dry. So just um, remember your light's coming this way, so it's on the right side of these limbs. That's going to be too big, too. I think I'm going to have to do colored pencil. Or white. So I just have the Prismacolors, and yeah, that's better. And you can do all kinds of little marks, the little branches, that would be kind of cool. Um, a lot of times you'll see trees just covered in frost. It looks really awesome. It's almost like you're in a different world. And the little stuff like this is what makes a painting, I believe. So just take your time. Have fun with it. Enjoy the, the uh, painting process. It's supposed to be relaxing for you. And that's the nice thing also about these um, paints is you're able to use colored pencils over top of it because it's a matte finish. Now don't go down to the bottom because the trees are, sh are sheltering this so uh, you're not going to get all the Uh, highlights all the way down but you can do as many top branches as you want and you wouldn't even have to uh, necessarily put black just use the uh, white because the trees are frost um, laden when you have uh, smaller twigs. You just want to uh, probably uh, have a little bit of a sharp pencil. Uh, that. You could also um, do some stuff on the very tops of these trees if you wanted to. Put some very top. 
And there'd be tons and tons of, of little twigs on the tops of the trees. So it depends on, you know, some people actually use a uh, sponge and sponge on the top. Might, maybe we'll try that, see what it looks like. Why not? This is an experiment. This isn't a canvas painting. This is how we learn by experimenting. Um, let's see. Okay, so down here, I, I added some white. Now, you could even use this colored pencil for um, doing your lines on the, maybe there would be a shine on the sides of the poles, like that. Um, I'm going to use a black, and just right here I had a white line, because that's where a stick or something's coming up. Same with these, but I'm going to try and keep it on the left side or the underside of these white marks. Like that. Um, I don't think you can see any of the trunks, so I don't have to worry about that. But you could eh, do as many or as few as you want. Now, there are quite a few uh, little twigs in here. You could do that. That would look nice against this. Uh, and they, they aren't... Um, highlighted because they're down and kind of in the ditch. They are different uh, shapes. So you might want to thicken some, darken some a little more than others. Like that. It's quite a few. It's a it's in the bush area, so you would see that. It gives it character. And you could also put a little in here if you wanted to. If maybe you put a little too much, just do a little bit of jaggeding in areas. Open them up a little bit. Maybe you want a few... Branches sticking through. Sometimes you'll see that. Like that. Um, let's bring this one up a little bit. Any of these that look like they might need a little bit of help. You just play with things until you like what you see. And if you don't, you can always start over again. And that's how you learn. All right, we got to put a moon in. I'm going to put a little Okay, now a moon, um, let's see, that could be a good moon. I am going to get some white, need a little bit more. I'm going to put it on my baby wipe here, it's a clean baby wipe. And I'm going to put it on top. Of this, it's flat. Oh, 
Hopefully this works. Should. Make a stamp. I'm going to have to go in a minute and it's online quiz. Okay, so there's my moon. Not bad. <laughs> it's a little easier than try to uh, draw one with your paintbrush. I don't know about you, but circles are a little difficult to keep a circle. <laughs> so we can um, dry that. Okay, Dot. Have fun with it. I can take my brush and we're going to add a little bit of gray to this mix. And I'm just going to dab areas. The moon has all got little craters in it and whatnot. And I'm going to take my, where's that brush? I'll use this, I guess. And I'm just going to, well, it's wet. Just dab. Maybe a little bit of white. Like so. And you can look at a moon and get it right on. I'm just making this one up. Okay, and now what I want to do is uh, make some splatters. So, let's dry the moon first. And when you do splatters, there's a trick to making... Um, Let's actually use this mister. Whoa. To make splatters in a distance, you want a white paint. So let's get another batch of white here. I'm going to put a little water with it. And I have a toothbrush. I like toothbrushes for doing this. Because it gives it um, the right effect I want. Now, before you put it on, I like to spray my area so that it's damp. You can wipe off any really wet, wet. But you want it damp. OK. 
Okay, and then you flick it. And the higher you go, the finer your snowflakes. And when you wet your area like this, what happens is they they start to um, uh, soften around the edges. So then you kind of wait for a little bit for it to soften. Let's put a little more on. Just let it soften. They kind of blur out a little bit and they're not so defined. And I like that. So let's dry that now. Oh, these ones are kind of swirling. All right, so now what I can do is add another layer. Yeah, a little bit more water. You can put another layer. This, these are a little more watery. Don't put too many in because the moon is out. So this could be just from snow blowing up, whatever. And we can dry that. And I think that's all there is. Yep, that's right. So there she is. I think it turned out really cool. 
and uh, it's not that hard to do guys try it in your uh, file folders or if you have some mixed media paper or watercolor paper try it first before you start doing it on a uh, canvas so I find a lot of people when they uh, they get all excited about doing a painting and they, they don't even um, try it first out on a piece of paper and then like most paintings when you first do a painting that you've never done before it doesn't always work out so I find a lot of people when that happens is they don't bother painting again after that because they were so disappointed and the they feel like they've wasted a canvas. So try it out on paper first. Watch this video a few times and try and go step by step. You can stop the video and do your thing and then continue watching. But they're fun to do and you can make up your scene. You don't have to have all this either. But if you look at it, um, it's not that, it's kind of a crazy looking, but it works. Your eye tells your brain, yep, that's snow prints. <laughs> so, so this is a very, um, beginner easy. It's not that difficult. So I hope you'll give it a try. Let's see, what's the date today? 11, 17. Oh my gosh. It's going to be the new year before you know it. That's crazy. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll give it a go. Uh, I can put up the reference photo for you on... Just give me a uh, couple hours and I'll put it in the description below for you so you can um, download it. And that's for everybody, subscribers, whoever wants to paint this. All right. So if there's any questions, I will let you go. And you have a fantastic creative day and uh, enjoy your weekend. And I hope you're uh, doing well and staying creative. All right. Bye for now, everybody. See you on Tuesday.